Good morning, Harrisonville Church of the Nazarene. I hope you're staying healthy and safe. I'm glad you could join us for worship on Palm Sunday. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay.
Thank you, Austin, and welcome to all of you out there in Facebookville. We are so glad that you are joining us today for worship. It's our hope that we can help you connect with God in a meaningful way. I want to ask you to do something for me. Uh, you, you may think this is trivial. You may think this isn't important, but I really hope right now you'll stop, go to your comment section, and say hello let us know how you're doing. I'm your pastor, and it's driving me crazy <laughs> to not be able to be with you and to check in on you and to see you weekly. And I would just really appreciate it if you could do that uh, for us right now. Even if you're a guest, you don't normally attend our church, we want to welcome you right now. Mm -hmm. Would you just please go ahead and say hello? I'm checking you out today or whatever you want to put there. We won't bug you. Uh, again, just it'd be great to know that you're out there with us. Good. Glad to have Pastor Rocky with us right here and to help us out for the service again today. Appreciate you being here last week and again Thanks. today. Thanks. And he's going to read a scripture for us at this time. Okay, we're going to be in Colossians in your New Testament, chapter 1, beginning of verse 15. Colossians chapter 1, verse 15. I encourage you to get your Bibles. Follow along with us as we read the scriptures, as Pastor preaches. We know the Lord will really bless you by that. It says here in Colossians chapter 1, verse 15, He, meaning Christ, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by Him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have preeminence. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. This is the Lord's day, our day to celebrate Christ and the resurrection of the Lord coming very soon now for us to celebrate that on Easter Sunday. Mm. Lord, today, as we are so grateful to be alive, to be Christians serving God, we pray that you will bless your people. Help them all, Lord God, everywhere as they watch this, to be fed from the Lord, fed from your word. Let the Holy Spirit move into every home. Come to each one, O oh God, as we share this time together and gather around the scriptures. And may you just feed into our souls something we can't get anywhere else. It can only come from God. And Lord, we know that as spiritual beings... We must have soul food for our souls. So feed us today. Make us strong, Lord. Strong to stand for Christ. To stand up against the trials and tribulations the devil may throw at us. Help us today to give you all the glory and all the praise. And we will be careful to rejoice in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to have a few announcements just now from John and Haley. And we hope you'll enjoy them. Good morning, Harrisonville NAS. Pastor John here with Haley. And we have your announcements for today. Please remember that due to the coronavirus, we have postponed all in-person worship services and ministries until the end of April, but we still have a lot of opportunities for you to stay connected while we're all distanced. Yes, join Pastor Steve for his daily devotions at 9.30 a.m. Monday through Friday. And join the Facebook prayer group that meets on Tuesday at 6 p.m. Pastor Steve will be on there to take prayer requests and to pray with you. And also remember that we're offering a Wednesday afternoon Bible study on Facebook Live that will make up for the Wednesday night group that is not currently meeting. And kids, don't miss Pastor Kim's Daily Resurrection Egg Lesson on Facebook. And since we can't meet for Good Friday, Pastor Steve will host an online Good Friday service at 6 p.m. Friday, April 10th. So we want to encourage you, if you're able to, to go out and get some bread and some grape juice when um, Pastor Steve will lead us in the Lord's Supper together. And don't miss the Easter... Resurrection Celebration on Sunday, April 12th at 10.45 a.m. God bless and stay safe. Thank you, Pastor John and Haley. I appreciate you giving us those announcements. And we've come to that time of the service where we take the offering and we're doing it in a little bit different way uh, than we would normally do here, obviously. We're not passing the plate, but you could take a moment right now uh, and if you again, you can hit that stop button and come back in just a minute if you want to. Get on our website at harrisonvillenaz.org. 
very simple to set it up. Some of you have done that. Some of you even set up recurring payments so you don't even have to think about it. It just comes out for you that way. There's a way for you to do that on, the, on there as well. And I just got to say thank you again. Some of you have already done that this week. And again, uh, every day that I went to the mailbox this week, there, there was a tithe check in the mail. You are amazing. You're generous. And we are grateful and thankful. I, I, I don't know how to, to say it uh, any better than that. It just, just know that it means a lot to me. And it gives my heart hope and encouragement the, the way you're responding to this crisis. We do have a special need for you. As you. If you've gone to this church last year, you know this has been a year of transition. I'm only three months into my new assignment. Mm -hmm. It's been quite a, but unlike any first yeah. three months I've ever had, I can yeah. assure you. Yes. And uh, over the course of the past year, and, and as is typical, and, and Pastor Rocky, I'm sure you, you know this as well. When there's a transition from one pastor to another pastor, there's a tendency for the finances to go down a little mm -hmm. bit in the course of that year. And we are at the end of a church year. Uh, we're two months away from the end of this church year. Our church year ends May 31st, the way we're set up. And we are a little bit off financially over the course of the whole year, a little bit off in the budgeted amount that we had set. The good news is it's not terrible. It's actually a very reachable goal. And, and I wrestled with this, Pastor Rocky. I didn't, even, I didn't know if I should do this. I talked to a couple board members, but I, I just, the way I've seen this church respond mm -hmm. uh, in this situation, I just believe that we have a goal that we could hit. And here's how, I, I don't want to say simple because I don't know if anything is simple financially right now, but here's how attainable the goal is at this point. And again, we don't know what's going to happen next week. I understand that. But here, from where we sit right now, all we would need is for every person, every giving unit at this church to continue doing what they've been doing. And if every giving unit added about $60 this month and next month, I'm talking $60 for the whole month, not each time, but $60 above and beyond what you normally give to general operating expenses, we would make up the gap. And I just believe that we, we can do that. I believe it's an opportunity for us to have a yay God moment mm -hmm. in the midst of a tough situation. And, and I'm just, all I'm going to do is present the need. It's not going to be a hard sell at all because I, I, I am not oblivious to what's going on. Trust me. I am aware, but I do believe that if we're faithful, God, God will be faithful even if we're not faithful. Amen. But he, he loves to bless his people, and he blesses those who give. So I just throw that opportunity out there for you to think about it this time. Pray about it, and if you can do it, uh, we could close that gap, and it'll just be one more thing to celebrate. The work of the mission goes on. Uh, Pastor Rocky was here with us for a little bit today. We gave away uh, over 50 hams. Uh, and uh, talk about a yay God moment. We budgeted $13 for each ham. I got there today, and would you believe, I bet you would, but <laughs> would you believe those hams were on sale for $8 a piece? I ordered them in advance, and they gave us a huge discount. So we've got extra money, and I'm trying to figure out what we're going to do with that. Isn't that a good problem Praise to have? <laughs> so God. Well, I'm, I'm praying and thinking about it. In fact, if you want to leave comments, leave me some ideas today. We've probably got four or $500, and I think this would be a great time to, to bless our community. If you know some people in the church who could use a ham, we have five to ten left, and we'd be more than happy to help them out with that at this time. So, again, thank you. Let's pray and ask God for his help at this time. God, we thank you for your faithfulness, and I want to thank you again for the faithfulness of this amazing church family. I, I've never seen anything like this uh, financially. Um, and as I talk to other pastors, uh, their, their, their shock is pretty evident because this isn't normal, that this is a wonderful, faithful, generous group of people. I pray that you'll bless them for their faithfulness, and God, I pray that you would help us to do the mission. I pray for everybody who got that ham yesterday, that they would just know that that's a tangible expression of your love through us. And we ask you to guide us in this service and all that we do here today. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, can I ask you, <clears throat> we gave out uh, all these hams today. Uh-huh. 
to uh, a lot of new families, a lot of new contacts. Mm -hmm. um, and I know you've, you've talked to us about church is going to have to be different mm -hmm. uh, during these times of this yeah. uh, uh, coronavirus and in, even in the future. Mm -hmm. How are you seeing that happening now? And are you, have you changed your mind about that or, or what? No. Um, Every pastor has a joke. They're going to write a book someday of what they didn't teach me in seminary. <laughs> and, right. and there definitely was not a course on pastoring in a pandemic. And that's not, I mean, that's not a put down of yeah, them either. We're not meaning to joke about it. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's just, it's terrible yes. that we're, that we're dealing with this situation. And, um, and I'm just really trying to, I'm going to school right now is why I mentioned that. I, I'm just constantly on a video uh, watching how do we respond mm -hmm. to this situation. And I, I heard something that was really amazing um, that, that I had never thought of as far as Facebook goes. And the, they talk about how what we're doing right now, this service is kind of like a front door for people. But no matter what you do, it, it's about connections with people. And she, the, the lady that I was listening to on that um, video to, uh, the other night said, you got to have the front door, but you also got to have a living room. Cause, and we're experiencing this right now. In this terrible situation that we're in right now, uh, people are hungry for relationships. I'm, I'm reading a lot of things about how this sheltering in uh, is creating just people who are extroverted, they're struggling because they want to be around people. Mm -hmm. They can't be around people. Families that, that can't be with their families right now. Church was on the phone this week with a, a church member just broke down crying because they can't be with their church family right now. So uh, no matter what, connection with people is always going to be important. Wow. So um, I'm thinking about what do we do beyond this through the week with Facebook. And it, there's an email that you got this week that will um, highlight some things. I think it came yesterday that we're doing during the week to try to help you keep connected. And there's one more thing mm -hmm. uh, that we're adding this week. <clears throat> this Tuesday at 6 p.m., uh, I've, cr I, I've created in our Facebook page a group called F the Prayer Group. And I, I would invite you to go um, and check that out. It's, again, it's on our Facebook page, and you can, you can sign up to be a part of that group. Now, that's Tuesday. Tuesday at okay. 6 p.m. I'm going to be on there live on that, in that prayer group. And we're going to be, anybody that comes into that prayer group, uh, we'll be able to share some prayer requests and things like that. And, and interact a little Isn't that bit. Great what technology can yes. do for us at this yes. time. Praise and, God. And we desperate desperately need it because um, mm -hmm. th this is an unparalleled situation Definitely. that that no seminary could that that no seminary could prepare you for. Hey, boy, yeah, I agree and, with that. <laughs> and um, the only way we can get through a situation like this is leaning on our faith in God, as we're going to talk about in the message, mm -hmm. and leaning on each other. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna we're gonna continue to try to find these ways to. Help us connect w uh, with one another. Okay, you've been speaking to us on the theme of uh, receiving a faith lift. So why don't we get into those scriptures you're using, speaking from today? That's in John chapter 11. Uh, again, I encourage you to use your Bible with me in John chapter 11, beginning at verse 17, reading the story of uh, Lazarus. And it says this, so when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away, and many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Now Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Uh, Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am, praise God. <laughs> I am 
the resurrection mm -hmm. and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Mm -hmm. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you that we have you to turn to in these difficult days. We thank you that though we face disappointments, discouraging times, financial hardship, uh, God, just a, just a human fear right now yes. of how does this play out? How does it end? Uh, none, none of us have ever faced anything like this. Yes, Lord. And it truly is an unprecedented time. And as, we, as we've said, uh, no seminary, no training, nothing we've had. That There's just nothing, humanly speaking, that can prepare us for these situations. But we take comfort in knowing that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Amen. And we turn to you at this time, Jesus. Help us as we look into your word now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, if you'd like to get your Bibles out if you don't have them already, we're in John chapter 11. We're going to walk through this chapter. If the, if the number of times that I have preached a message on a passage is any evidence of how important it is to me, how important I think it is, or uh, where it ranks in my favorite passages of the Bible, this is one of the, <laughs> this has got to be near the top. I've probably preached out of this passage more time than any times, and you would think that would make it easier, but I've got to tell you, there's so much stuff here that every time I go through this passage, it just... It just, uh, there's always new stuff that uh, comes to me, and I believe it can really help us at this time. Joyce Meyer, many of you have heard of her, says depression begins with disappointment. And when disappointment festers in the soul, discouragement sets in. And I believe that's true. And we need to be careful right now. We are living in a time when disappointment abounds. Mm -hmm. And if we're not careful, if we let festers, if we let disappointments fester in our soul, discouragement can set in. I would imagine all of us are fighting that on a regular basis right now. It's part of the human condition that we're in right now. The Suttles home has seen its share of disappointments. I've shared with you the loss of my wife's job, pay, benefits, and all that goes with that. And, and I thought, as I read that statement, and I, I thought about some other things in our home. My, my son is a senior in college right now. His graduation's been canceled, so we, we don't know what's going to happen there. Uh, we have another son who's a freshman in college, so his first year at college has been basically canceled, and he's had to come home and, and, uh, li and live with us and, and totally reacclimate. He's lost his job for the time being. So he, he's facing disappointments. And, and then when I think about that, I, I am very aware that my list of disappointments and your list of disappointments, uh, as disappointing as they are, probably pale in comparison to most of the people that we know, uh, the stories that we're hearing, the kinds of disappointments that people are dealing with right now. So as we begin our series on Do You Need a Faith Lift, I'd like to talk to you today about disappointments and divine appointments. And if you live long enough, and I would dare say that all of us, anyone within the sound of my voice right now, in the last 12 months, you've suffered some sort of disappointment, discouraging situation. In fact, I think I could probably pretty safely say in the last 12 days, a lot of us have faced some tough disappointments. And the truth is, God's choicest people, even, sometimes suffer disappointments. In fact, I'm going to share with you the story of three of Jesus' best friends while he was on earth. Their names are Lazarus, Martha, and, Larry, uh, Martha and Mary. And Lazarus, much like we're hearing about right now, suddenly, it appears, gets sick. And within maybe a day of getting sick, passes away. Just like we're hearing sometimes this coronavirus comes on people so suddenly and just as quickly as they get it, it comes on them and some of them are dying quickly with this 
sickness. And it wasn't coronavirus, but something like this happened to Lazarus in this passage. So I'd like to take us to John chapter 11, verses 1 to 3 right now. It says there, Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary, and her sister Martha. I think it's interesting that, that John is very specific here. He lists names of people. He lists the village where all this is happening. I think he wants people to know as they read this, this was written in the lifetime of Jesus or, or, or sometime after that. Uh, some of these people that saw this miracle are still alive. It would have been easy to disprove the miracle that's about to happen. All you'd had to do is go find some of them and say, did this really happen or not? Mm -hmm. And they could have said, no, it didn't if it didn't happen. So there were eyewitnesses to this. They were still alive. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. And that happens actually a little later in John chapter 12. So the sisters sent word to Jesus. Now hear this. It says, Lord, the one you love is sick. Verse 5, it says, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. I want to hone in there for just a moment. Jesus loves these people. <clears throat> these are friends of his. One of his friends gets sick, and as we're going to see in a moment, dies. Suddenly, tragically, Jesus loves them. I say that to say that just because life is, an un just because life is unfair, it doesn't mean that God is unfair. And just because life is unfair, it doesn't mean that Jesus doesn't love us. It says right there, Jesus loved these people. And, and we're going to see, as we go through this passage, how he makes that love very clear to these friends of his. Look at verse 4. It said, when Jesus heard this, he said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Now, if you're not careful, you could read that passage and say, God made this man sick so that Jesus could use it as a situation to get glory out of it. That's not at all what it, that, that passage is saying at, at all. You see, we live in a fallen world, and God does not cause everything that happens. We live in a fallen world where people get sick. We live in a fallen world where, tragically, things like coronavirus happen and tornadoes and and God doesn't necessarily he doesn't like send these things and just just to get glory out of them what kind of a what kind of a God would do that but hear this just because God didn't cause it doesn't mean he can't use it that's the God that we serve even if he doesn't cause it directly he can use it to get glory and to strengthen the faith of his people God is always up to things that we don't understand God is up to something in this passage that even if he tried to tell them what was coming before it happened, their minds wouldn't have been able to completely take it in. Look at what happens in verse 5. We've already read verse 5, but let's read it again. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. He stayed there. He, and ju Just like sometimes we have a crisis... And we pray for Jesus to do something. Have you ever been here, Pastor Rocky? You've prayed for it, and it just seemed like Jesus isn't moving. Mm -hmm. he, it's just like he just stays there. What's going on when that happens in these situations? Mm -hmm. he, he doesn't act immediately in this situation. You see, there were other times, the, the truth is, that Jesus could not have physically gotten to Lazarus in time to get there and heal him. He died the day the message came to him, and it, took, it would have taken Jesus a day just to get from where he was at to Lazarus was. So there was no way physically Jesus was going to get there. But there were other times when Jesus spoke from a distance, and just by speaking the words was able to heal people from a distance. And certainly Jesus could have done that in this situation. And I, I'm sure that La that Mary and Martha, and, and we'll see this even, uh, they're asking some tough questions. Jesus, you love Lazarus. You could have spoken from where you're at. You could have healed him. I remember one situation I was going through uh, in, in seminary. 
I literally asked the question, God, why is this happening? What, what's, what's going on here? I mean, if we're honest, we've all asked that question from time to time. The thing is, is that we're not capable of completely understanding what God's up to all the time. I, I heard a, I was at a funeral several years ago. A, a mother, a son, and a daughter were all killed tragically in a house fire. And obviously people are asking, the, they were all good Christians. People are asking the obvious question, why, why did this happen? And the pastor said something great. And I, I've, I've remembered it ever since that day. He said, God trying to explain his big plan and his big purpose and all the complexities of life would be like him trying to explain the complexities of the universe to an ant. You know, the, the truth is our human minds are not capable of understanding what God's always up to. How God's working in every situation. In fact, if you read the book of Job, that's the whole, that's the whole theme of it. Job, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth and said, waters, you go here and stop here? We're not God, and we, we can't quite understand everything that he's up to. But God was using this tragedy for a purpose. In fact, he was going to use this tragedy that he didn't cause to give them a faith lift, which is exactly what we're talking about. And friends, mark my words, the bigger the test, the bigger the testimony. Maybe you've heard that phrase, and I, I believe that that phrase is true. The bigger the test, the bigger the testimony. And he knew that these women could handle it. These were some of his prize saints. These were special women. And by allowing them to go through this test, by allowing them to go through this situation, their faith is going to get lifted to a completely different level, a level that they never could have imagined before in their lives. So let me give you a prayer to pray when you're facing a difficult situation. I heard this recently, and, I, and I've started to pray this. When, you, when you're facing a difficult situation, why don't you tr try praying a prayer like this. God, thank you that you consider me worthy of dealing with this situation. Because he obviously has confidence in us that we can handle what he, what's coming our way. And friends, as we're going to see as we go through this message, child of God, hear me. When we go through these disappointments, God's going to, at some point, if we don't lose sight of him, don't, we don't give up, he's going to lift our faith and he's going to do something so amazing, it's going to blow the socks off everybody who hears about it. I've heard some amazing stories in my lifetime, as I know that you have. And he go, uh, it goes on in verse 11, Jesus said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, a short while ago, the Jews there tried to stone you and you're going to go back? The, the, the disciples, they're, they're walking in the dark now. They don't understand everything that's going on. And we're walking in the dark right now. Uh, this is one of the darkest times I've experienced in my lifetime. This is one of the darkest, the, prob probably one of the darkest times in the entire history of the earth. <laughs> that this would be up there in the top ten of them, I'm sure. We're in the dark right now, but I've got good news for you. Jesus is never in the dark. Amen. And what we need to, all we got to do is stay connected to him and he will get us through this. Because look at what it says in verse 9. Jesus said, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble for they see by this world's light. It is when a person walks at night that they stumble for they have no light. Jesus is always up to speed on what the Father is up to. And all we got to do is stay connected to him, and he will walk us through this. Look at verse 11. After he'd said this, he went on to tell them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Again, they're in the dark. They don't know what's going on here. Jesus isn't there. He has no way of knowing this except that he's Jesus. <laughs> and it says in verse 13, Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Now, wait a second. There's a big problem here, Pastor Rocky. What's the problem here? <laughs> is he dead or not? <laughs> well, and in verse 4, Jesus says, this sickness won't end in death, right? right? Mm -hmm. And he's dead. There's a big disconnect here. Either 
Jesus got it wrong or Jesus lied, neither one of those is a, is a very good thing. But again, Jesus knows some things we don't know. Verse 15 says, and for your sake, this, I remember reading this and my mind just about exploded. For your sake, I'm glad I wasn't there. What do you mean <laughs> you're glad you weren't there? If you were there, you could have saved him. But remember, Jesus could have saved him from where he's at. He didn't need there. But here, here, this is the key. I'm glad I was not there so that you may believe they're about to get a faith lift. They just don't understand it yet. But let us go to him. Then good old Thomas said to the rest of the disciples in verse 16, let us also go that we may die with him. Boy, Thomas, he's just like a first century Eeyore <laughs> from Winnie the Pooh. I mean, everything's negative. He never, he, he, he just, every time he's in scripture, I think it's, it's him doubting. Uh, of course, when he saw the resurrected Christ, that all changed, and that's what we're headed toward right now. <laughs> Verse 17, on his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. He's been dead four days. This, th this is a situation that by all intents and purposes is beyond redemption and repair. Mm -hmm. He's been dead four days. Verse 20 says, when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. I love verse 21 and the way, it, the way it puts this. Friends, remember the disappointment if we allow it. Disappointment, and this is in your notes somewhere, disappointments can become a divine appointment. And Mary, Martha right now is about to get a divine appointment in the midst of her disappointment. It says in verse 21, she says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. I don't know about you, but as I read that passage, I, I see two things in that passage. I see great faith, and I see great disappointment. And I think sometimes we fail to realize that it's possible to be disappointed and have faith at the same time. She says, look, Jesus, if you'd been here, I know he wouldn't have died. That's faith. I, I don't care how sick he was. If, if you'd have been here, all you'd have had to have done was say the word and he wouldn't have died. I also kind of hear in there maybe a little bit of, why weren't you here? Why didn't you get here in time? You've saved so many others. Why not this friend, of your, this friend of yours that you love. But here, listen, but I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. I see a sliver of faith there. And, and friends, child of God, she was, she was literally clinging on to the last scrap of faith that she had. That's okay, though, because the size, the size of our faith is not the issue. The size of our Savior is the issue. Amen. And she was holding on to one last sliver of faith that she had. And let me tell you, God's okay with disappointment. He's just not content to leave us there. Mm -hmm. Disappointment's a part of life. We can't get around that. The size of our faith is not the issue. It's the size of our Savior that matters. One of my, uh, one, one of my favorite lines in the movie the, of the Chronicles of Narnia, maybe you saw some of those series, th those movies in that series. It's the second one with Prince Caspian, I believe. Lucy, the youngest girl, sees uh, Aslan. Uh, she'd not seen him for some time. It was the second movie, so we're in the sequel. She's grown up. She's gotten a little bit older. And when she sees Aslan the first time in that movie, Prince Caspian, Aslan is the lion, the symbol of God in that, uh, in that whole series. She says, Aslan, you've gotten bigger. And Aslan says to her, no, no, I haven't. And she says, you have it? And he says, no, you've just gotten older. And I thought, man, isn't, isn't that the way it should be? God's a lot bigger to me now than he was 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. The more I go through crises and see God bring me through those crises, the bigger God gets to me. Amen. Yeah. Do you remember flannel graph? 
<laughs> You're dating me now. <laughs> yeah, I'm dating myself because I, I remember it too. Flannel graph Jesus. I was thinking about that. That was my first introduction to Jesus. Okay. Flannel graph Jesus. Uh, my aunt was actually teaching Sunday school one day and some of you have no idea what flannel graph is. I don't even know real well how to describe it, but they're cut out figures with something on the back of the figures and they would put these cut out figures up on a flannel board and you would get a flannel graph cut out form of Jesus and then you would bring all the like maybe he's healing somebody and maybe the blind man and they'd bring a blind man and they'd put it up on there and they'd tell a story about how Jesus healed this blind man and I got to thinking could you imagine if we tried this today with our kids in this generation with all this technology that we had then I got to thinking maybe it would be cool maybe they think maybe it's something so novel <laughs> that maybe they'd get a kick out of it but um that was my introduction to Jesus, flannel graph Jesus. You know what? At eight years old, flannel graph Jesus was fine. But 53-year-old Steve needs something a lot bigger and better than flannel graph yeah, Jesus. Yeah. I remember, I think it was in the 90s, they came out with the super size. I, I think it was McDonald's. I remember the first time I, I, it happened that I ordered something. They said, would you like to supersize that? I didn't even know what it meant to supersize it, so I asked what that means. They said, well, you can get bigger portions. Well, asking me if I want more food is a stupid question, so I said, sure, go ahead and supersize it. And then I started supersizing everything and uh, started gaining weight and getting on medicine, so I had to quit supersizing it. But let me tell you something. It's always okay to get a supersized Jesus, Amen. and I believe we need a supersized Jesus Amen. right now. We need Amen. a fresh, up-to-date, real supersized yep. hero, real supersized portion of Jesus in our lives. Well, the, the, the Avengers have nothing on Jesus. <laughs> He's got, all, he's got the whole world in his hands. And I, I believe that if we're going to get through this, we need a Jesus, we need a Christ who's bigger than coronavirus. And I've got good news to you, we, for you. We have a Jesus. We have a Christ who is bigger than coronavirus. Amen. Jesus says to her in verse 23, Your brother will rise again. Martha answered, Well, I know at the resurrection, he'll rise again. Jesus said to her in verse 25, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. I, I, I want to ask you this now. As I look right into the camera, do you believe this? It's the most important question you'll ever be asked. In fact, while we're worrying about a lot of different things at coronavirus, about coronavirus right now, the most important question anybody can ask you right now is, do you believe what we're talking about right here? In fact, it's probably never been more important in our lifetime. Jesus says here, I am the resurrection and the life, and I've got to camp here for, for just a second. I am is the name that God gave Moses when Moses asked him at the burning bush, he said, what, who, who shall I tell the children of Israel sent me when I go to Egypt, when I go to the Pharaoh and say, let my people go, who do I tell them sent me? And God said, tell them I am who I am sent you. Jesus says, I am. He, he, he's saying there very clearly, I'm God. Ma Martha, God is with you here right now. Amen. She didn't quite understand it, but I... I I want you to know God is with us right now. Mm -hmm. We just need a faith lift right now. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. Now, that phrase, I am, simply, it just, the, the, the Hebrew word simply means to be or to exist. It means to be self-existent, self-sufficient, unchanging. It, it means to uh, be totally independent, self-sufficient, self-existent life. God needs no one else, no, nothing else, in order for him to survive. Coronavirus is no threat to God. He existed before Amen. it. He will exist after it. Yeah. God will be on the throne, is on the throne, was on the throne. He is, he will be, and he was. He was and is and will be. That, that, that's what Scripture consistently teaches us. He is indestructible, always present life. I am the resurrection of life, Jesus says. I am is with you right here. God is in your midst. And I want us to be reminded 
no matter how dark and depressing, no matter how disappointing things may be right now, I want to remind us, God is with us. He's in control. But we've got to go to Mary now in verse 32. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Again, I see disappointment and faith all wrapped up in that one statement. It'd be easy for us to get on old Mary and Martha here. Mm -hmm. But one thing we need to remember, they're living before Jesus' resurrection. So they haven't even had the experience of Jesus rising from the dead here yet. And they're in the same situation we are, except that we now know Jesus did rise, rise from the dead. They're living, and we're living somewhere in between Eden, the world as God created it, and the new heaven and the new earth, as it will be when Jesus returns and takes us to be with him. We're, we're now in that parentheses right now. We're living there in that parentheses that we call life. And in the middle of all this, things that God does not will, things that God does not cause, happen. But just because he doesn't cause it doesn't mean he can't use it. And I, uh, uh, verses 33 to 37 we're going to look at show us what God thinks of what's going on now. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. He's deeply troubled. He's moved in spirit. Where have you laid him, he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Verse 35, the shortest verse in the Bible, but there's more theology in these two words maybe than any two words in the Bible. Jesus wept. Jesus isn't happy at what's going on. Jesus isn't happy when people he loves faces these crises. Whenever I preach a funeral, I remind them that Jesus is here with us right now, and he's weeping with us. He, he, he doesn't like what's happening. This isn't how he created it. Verse 36, then the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Again, faith and disappointment. I see it both there in those words. So now Jesus moves into action in verse 38. Once more deeply moved, he came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. He's got to be thinking about the fact that he's about to be laid in one of those tombs right now. He's got to be thinking about the crucifixion. This is not very, this is we, maybe a week before it all happens. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha. Remember, Martha's in the dark. By this time, there's a bad odor. He's been in there four days. I think that's why Jesus waited. You know, sometimes um, there, there could have been disputes. Maybe that person didn't really die. He got there right after they happened. But this, this guy's dead with a capital D. He's been in the grave four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? I don't think that's a rebuke there. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think it is. I believe Jesus... As we go through these disappointments, I believe Jesus will ask us these questions to stir our faith. 41 says, so they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. He's going after a faith lift here, okay? That's, that's what this whole thing is about. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. One old timer said if he hadn't said Lazarus, the whole cemetery would have come out. <laughs> the dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. I don't know if this next one's true, but one person has said that he must have been levitating because he was completely wrapped up in, in all this grave clothes. What a sight that must have been. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Jesus will lift our faith just like he lifted Lazarus out of that grave if we let him. That's what Jesus was up to the whole time here. He knew this was going to end. And he didn't say Lazarus wouldn't die in verse 4. He simply said this will not end in death. And believer, that's the hope that we have. 
Coronavirus ultimately can't hurt any of us. There is no grave that can keep the believer down because there is no virus too big for the victor. Jesus is in control. Jesus has killed death. And Jesus says, you know what, just like the great I Am surfed on the waters of the Red Sea when he led the children of Israel through the Red Sea, I'm going to surf on the grave, I'm going to dance on the grave, oh grave, where is thy victory, sin, where is thy sting? Child of God, your disappointment is an invitation to an appointment with the great I Am. Amen. And all we have to do is stand on the promises. In verse 4, we saw it. Jesus said, this will not end in death. We can cling to that promise. This will not end in death if we're a believer. No matter what happens to us, this will not end in death. No, Christ, no crisis is a match for the Christ. And here's the thing. I believe the bigger the disappointment, the bigger the faith lift we're going to get. And I am looking for quite a revelation of Jesus out of this whole coronavirus thing. Because what could be more disappointing than what we're facing right now? But the bigger the disappointment, the bigger the revelation, and the bigger the revelation, the bigger the faith lift. We are in store for a faith lift if we don't give up. And here's what I want you to know. The size of our faith doesn't matter right now. Think about the coronavirus. I, I read this this week. It's, it's, it's microscopically small. You've got to look at a microscope to even see it, but look at how powerful and deadly it is. Faith the size of a mustard seed can move a mountain. Amen. We serve the Jesus who is the resurrection and the life. Mm -hmm. Coronavirus is no match for him. Corona, this financial situation is no match for our Jesus. Hold on to faith. Cling to it. Cling to his promises right now. If you're not a believer, I want to close right now by talking directly to you. It says in verse 45, Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit M M Mary and had seen what Jesus did believed in him. That's what this is all about, a faith lift. Jesus could have spoken the word and healed Lazarus. Maybe a few would have lit. Maybe a few would have believed. But Jesus knew if he waited and came four days later uh, uh, that so many more were going to believe. Remember, he didn't cause it. He used it for the glory of God. And many people came to have, many other people besides Lazarus came to have eternal life because of this. But ver verse, verse 46 says, but some of them who went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus said. Some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. Then the chief priests and Pharisees called a meeting of the Sanhedrin. And then in verse 53, from that day forward, they plotted to take his life. Mm. There were some people who were there that day and believed, and some people who didn't. Mm. I saw that miracle. And some of you right now, have a decision to make. I want to ask you the question, do you believe this? Again, if this wasn't true, there's any number of people that they could have gone to. Jesus gave names. There were probably 100 people there that day that saw this. There was any number of people that they could have gone to to disprove this. Jesus killed death. Jesus killed the coronavirus. And he said, he who believes in me has eternal life. Even if he dies or she dies, she will live. Do you believe this? You know, they say the coronavirus, as it stands now, I think the latest number I heard is about 4% who get it will die. There's a 4% mortality rate. There's another sickness more deadly than coronavirus. In fact, it's 100% deadly. It's the sickness called sin. Jesus said... Or Paul wrote, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Friends, I don't say this to, to scare anyone, but I want to look right into the camera and say, if you don't know Jesus, this is a good time to get to know him. I don't say this to fear monger, but we're living in a day where we can be healthy one day and sick the next, and who knows what happens. 
I say this to you to say that you can have confidence in the midst of this crisis if you put your faith in Jesus. Jesus has killed death. That's what Easter is all about. It's not about the eggs. It's about Jesus who killed death. Do you believe this? Would you pray with me? If you're not a believer, you're watching this right now. I want to ask you to pray this prayer with me. Father God, I turn my life over to you. I need confidence for this crisis. I need the Christ who's bigger than coronavirus. I need a faith lift. I need you in my life. I ask you to forgive me for my sins. You died for my sins. I ask you now to forgive me and to come into my life. I give you control, Jesus. I ask you to take control, make me a new person, send your spirit to live inside of me. And help me to live these days of disappointment, knowing that it can lead to a divine appointment. And God, I pray for my flock, my brothers and sisters in Jesus right now. As we face these disappointments, give us the faith lift that we need. Help us to remember it's not the size of our faith that matters, it's the size of our Savior. Help us to trust you and to believe in you and to cling to you at this time. For it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer to receive Christ, I'd ask you right now in the comment section to just say, I asked Jesus into my heart today. Make that public statement. Be, uh, be aware of the announcements that were given, all sorts of different ways that you can be connected with us as a church at this time, even though we can't be here together. It gets weirder every week. I don't know how you feel to, to be in here and do this with nobody here. Um, I, I pray that this will end and we'll be, a, be together soon. Pastor Rocky, do you have anything for us that you'd like to leave us with today? Well, uh, two things. I, I do have a follow-up question I want to ask you, but I want to ask your permission for something. Okay. If folks, as they've been listening to us, have responded in prayer mm -hmm. to receive Christ, how would you feel about them getting in touch with you for any further help or prayer? Yeah, that would be great. How can they do that? The best way for you to do that would be pastor.suttles. That's S-U-T-T-L-E-S at gmail.com. I have some Bible studies. I could get them in the mail okay. to you. Okay. And depending on how far you want to go, we could get somebody on the phone with you to go through those Bible studies with you. Okay, that's pastor.suttles at, at gmail.com. At gmail.com, okay. Uh, I've heard this statement I'm about to make for years in the church. Uh, people have said, when you can't see God's hand, trust God's heart. Mm. How would you take that? What does that mean to you, and especially in light of your message here? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. And, and, you know, it's like I said in the message today, most of the time we don't understand what's going on. And we don't know the end game either. And, and I don't think we're capable of knowing it. And if anybody is like me, I, I'm a strategic person and I'm logical. So when things aren't strategic and logical, it can start to mess with me real quick, okay? Yeah. So this message is as much for me as it is anybody else. And when things aren't logical, it's, just, it's hard for me. And it's at those times that I have to cling to the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And what that means to me is even if I can't understand uh, his plan, mm -hmm. I know his heart for me is good. It's like the song, He's a Good, Good Father mm -hmm. by Chris Tomlin. I remember when my son was born, uh, my second son, James, he's the first of the twin. He, he was born two minutes ahead of John. He got very sick almost immediately. We had, he was in, I won't share the whole story, but he was in neonatal intensive care unit for 10 days. And I can remember thinking to myself, for me, it wasn't so much why is this happening to me. For me, it was why can't I be the one who's sick? Well, why, why does it have to be him? And to me, that's the heart of a father. Mm -hmm. And the heart of a father that would allow his son to die for me. I mean, I'm watching my son fight for his life. And then God gives his son to die for me. Mm -hmm. 
uh, that's the heart of the Father for us. He loves us. Amen, yeah. And we can count on that no matter what's going on. And again, I heard this week, um, this Dr. Anthony Fauci, I don't know how to say his name, but he's heading up. He's Fauci, the he's Fauci. Italian. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Fauci. Fauci, okay, you know all about that. <laughs> <laughs> Rocky Mayo knows all about that. Um, so uh, he said, uh, Mike Krzyzewski, the, the coach of Duke, was interviewing him on a show. And he, he, he asked him to use an analogy. Um, he said, how would you describe where we're at right now? He said, well, we're not even at halftime yet. And again, I, I, I don't, I'm not trying to depress us. That's what this whole message is about. But when we know God loves us, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter where we're out on our timetable. Mm -hmm. What matters is God's got his timetable and, mm -hmm. and his heart for us is good. Okay. That helps me. Okay. That helps me. All right. Well, again, thank you for joining us. I'm going to ask Pastor Rocky to close us in prayer. Okay. Heavenly Father, we have so much to learn. We're grateful that you're the great teacher. And at the same time, Lord, uh, we know that uh, there are new people that are hearing this message today, new for the first time, new in life in Christ. They're just brand new at this, this walk in Christ. We pray for them, that, Lord, they will just... Uh, uh, be grounded in the Lord, that somehow the Holy Spirit will come to them in their homes, wherever they're seeing this. And Lord, you will just wrap your arms around them as brand new children of God, yes, God. Who, who are loved by God today. And may you just help them, Lord, in every way to start this new life called Christian. Mm -hmm. And may we as well as the church, Lord, yeah. surround them with love. They've just joined a brand new family, mm -hmm. and we want that. And so we pray that you will help us to love one another in this church. And, and Lord, as we go out this week to represent you, may we be the ambassadors of Christ we need to be to build hope and faith in the people we meet. We thank you for going with us through this new week, and we give you all the praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you again for joining us. Check your email. from your. We, there's an email from the church, and it gives you all sorts of ways that you can stay connected with us throughout this week. God bless you. Thanks for joining us. We're praying for you.